Hey guys, so this is the review lecture for exam two, math 098, and we're starting with properties of exponents. Uh, for the actual test, at least in my class, you will get a sheet of notes with the properties of exponents on it, and then it will also include the squares, the list of squares, and the list of cubes from the factoring sections. Uh, so this first one right here is um, kind of a trick. Anything to the zero other than zero uh, is one. So this is just a very fancy one. Um, second one, we're going to be using um, property, where is it, property two first. And so probably the biggest error that people make here is they forget to do the numbers. They get locked up in doing the, the exponents, and they forget to make this two cubed, and then x to the twelfth, and two uh, cubed x to the 15th and so if I do that then we get 8x to the 12th uh, 8x to the 15th and 8 times 8 is 64 12 and 15 makes x to the 27 uh, this next one number three uh, we're gonna do well, we can do it one of two ways we can either use property 5 and do subtraction um, or we can use property four, rewrite it with positive exponents. Um, so let me show you a couple of ways of looking at this. So we can either go x to the negative five minus seven, which would give us x to the negative 12. And then that's where we'd still have to use property four, just using its second, and we get x to the 12th. Um, or I can think of this, oops, as since this is upstairs and negative, it means it really should be downstairs. And positive and so once I do that then I can see 7 and 5 for x to the 12th either way you want to get there's fine they, they both do the same thing um, so for this one I could say x to the negative 16 minus negative 11 which would make x to the negative 5 and then 1 over x to the 5 um, or I can rewrite this and since they're both negative I'd bring the 11 up I would bring the 16 down and I think if I canceled out 11 of them, I would still have five left in the denominator. Number five, um, so we're using property two, so we would be multiplying as we're raising to a power. So x to the eighth, and then down here we get x to the 28. And so we could do subtraction if you wanted. Um, I don't particularly care to, but you can. And I get x to the negative 20 right there. So that's going to be 1 over x to the 20. For me, I, again, think of it more as if I had 8 up and 28 of these x's down, and I cancel out 8 of them, I would still have 20 left in the denominator. And so I find that a little bit more intuitive that way. Uh, this one, a couple of different ways we can go. I think I would probably just run that negative in there first and just kind of get the signs right. So maybe x to the 4th, x to the negative 12th. And then for me, I would just think um, that the negative 12 comes up. So I would think of it this way, x to the 4, x to the 12, and then that would give me x to the 16th. You could also do x to the 4 minus negative 12 and get the same x to the 16th. Uh, you could also bring this down, make it x to the 8th downstairs, and then when you square it, you get x to the negative 16 downstairs and bring it up still x to the 16th. So there's a lot of right ways to do these. Okay, these uh, last couple for 0 0.4. Um, this is just multiplying the coefficients together and then we'll add the powers. So 2 times 3 would be 6 times 3 would be 18. And we got double negative, so it's positive. I got 3, 4, 5, and then 5 more for 10 x's all together. And on the y's, I have 4 here and 5 here, so that's going to give me 9 altogether. And let's see this last one. Uh, we can go, so this has a 20 and a 25, so I can go 5 goes into 20 4 times, and 5 goes into 25 5 times. It's negative. It's kind of funky to leave the negative sign in the denominator, so I'm going to bring it up top. As I do this, you could also write it right in front. Those are both good. The downstairs a little bit. Man. Um, looking at this, this is where I really like canceling and not writing it all out. So if I had four up and nine down, I thought about canceling out four of them. I would still have um, nine x or sorry, five x's downstairs. 
And here if I had 13 X's up top and 12 down below and I canceled out 12, I'd still have just one left in the numerator. Uh, 4.1 was a pretty quick, easy little section. It was addition and subtraction of polynomials, and so we've done this tons um, just in the course of other problems. So when it's an addition, the parentheses aren't really doing anything other than just separating the two polynomials. So here I can just say 9x squared minus 2x squared, and that will be 7x squared, uh, minus 3x plus 5x, so down 3, up 5, will put us at plus 2. And then here we have down 7 and then down another 10, so that's going to be minus 17. Um, for this one, your choice whether or not to rewrite it, but right here that minus sign has to get distributed. So you can kind of think of it as a little negative 1 that's going to go to every term. Um, so I'll show it rewritten. And then I just get negative 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus x and then a plus 9. So for me, I make fewer errors, I think, if I write that, but you can certainly do it in your head. Um, 11 minus 4 would leave us 7x cubed. So like terms. Um, so for squareds, I got here and here, so that's minus 10x squared. That's our lone x, so we'll put that in there. And then we got 7 plus 9. That'll give us a 16. Okay, 4.2 is multiplication of polynomials. And so this first one's a 2 by 3, so what we're going to do is we're going to go 2x to all of these, and after that we'll go 3 to all of them. So we're going to multiply two things by three things, so we should get six things. So if I go 2x times x squared, I get 2x cubed. 2x times 2x minus 4x squared. 2x times 3 would be plus 6x. And then the same thing with the 3, so everything's just going to get 3 times bigger. So 3x squared minus 6x and plus 9. And then it's just collecting like terms like we did in the last section. So 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x squared would leave us a minus x squared minus 6x and then 6 and 9 for 15. Uh, for this one, what we want to do is multiply two of them together first, and then multiply the next one in. Um, I prefer to multiply two things by three things, so I'm going to multiply these two, but the order doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to bring down my x to plus 4, and here I'll go x times x for x squared, x times 1 for x, and minus 2x off the middle, and a minus 2 on the end. And then it's just, it's a little bit easier if you put those two terms together, because here you have to go two things by four things and get eight things. So if I combine those first, sneak down here and get myself a little more room, I get x squared uh, minus x in the middle there, minus two. And now it's basically just like this problem. So I'll multiply my x through and everything gets x bigger, which is a nice way of thinking of it, because you just x cubed minus x squared minus two x, which is a, a very quick way if you just realize it's all getting x bigger. And here it's all going to get 4 bigger, so it's just going to be what I have, but by 4. So 4x squared minus 4x minus 8. And then collecting up some terms, I have x cubed minus x squared there, plus 4x is that be plus 3x squared. Minus 2, minus 4, so that's minus 6x and minus 8. And then the other thing that we saw in this section was special products. Um, so these ones we're supposed to kind of just mentally do out. If on the test, if you're not fabulous at these, you can absolutely foil. Um, you know, so this you can do out all the steps. The idea is to look at it and go, it's a plus b, a minus b. Those always come out a squared minus b squared. So it's just going to be 3y times 3y, 9y squared, and then b squared, 5 squared would be minus 25 and you got it um, For these ones. These are the ones where people have a little bit more trouble And so if it's better for you to write it 2y plus 3 2y plus 3 and do out all those steps. That's totally good um, I'm going to use the special product formula just because that was what um, was sort of intended with this problem, but this is a Completely fine way to do it if you're not really confident with special products yet um, so for this, this is where we do, uh, the first thing is the A, the 2Y, and the second thing is the B, which would be our 3, and they're basically just plugging in here. 
So this first part is a squared, so 2y times 2y will be 4y squared. And then the middle is the 2ab, so we go 2y times 3 is 6, and then we double it, and that makes 12. And then 3 times 3 makes 9. Uh, anytime we're subtracting, you got to be careful to open that parenthesis because we're going to want to subtract the, all of it, not just the first term. And then doing the same thing here, y times y is y squared. Uh, y times 4 times 2 would be 8y. And 4 times 4 would be 16. Um, I happened to pick two that were pluses. Had I done a minus, it just would put a minus right there. Uh, once I got that, I can just run that sign through. So it becomes a minus y squared minus 8y minus 16. And then collect up terms. So 4y squared minus y squared, 3y squared. 2y minus 8y plus 4y. 9 minus 16 um, would leave minus 7. Okay, so then we get into the factoring portion um, of the chapter. And this is where it gets a little bit harder. Um, so this is where we have kind of the six factoring styles, and we have to be able to both tell them apart and then execute all of the different styles. Um, so I'll kind of go through the sections here and then do a summary in, in 4.6. Um, so 4.3, we picked up greatest common factor and factor by grouping. Um, so for every factoring problem, you know, you want to think, what's my first step? Look for GCF. And if there is a GCF, we have to get that kind of out of the way. And then that's going to let us actually tell what section we're in and what kind of factoring it is. Um, from there we do, does it have two terms, three terms, or four terms? So these were our four-term varieties from um, 4.3, and they're always going to be a factor by grouping. Um, so looking at this first example, I don't have a GCF because this doesn't have an X and that doesn't, you know, threes and fours don't go, so that won't work out. But for grouping, what we do, remember, is we cover up the second two terms and we say, what can I pull out of these two? Um, so that's going to be an X and an X minus three. And then once you get that X minus three, go ahead and write it down again. Um, and then you have to make this stuff do that because this ends up being our GCF. So what do I multiply x by to get back to 4ax? That would be a 4a, and it would be positive. And I always just check my second one to make sure. So 4a times 3, negative 12a, so all is good. Um, x minus 3 comes out front, and then x plus 4a is what's left. For number 16, um, this is going to be, again, four terms, so we know it has to be a grouping problem. This one's slightly sneakier. Uh, if I cover up these two, then I look, I can take always the lowest power of x. So in that case, this would be x squared, leaving an x plus 4. And then I'm going to need another x plus 4. And it helps me to write that to see that I need to take out a negative 9. And then I kind of distribute back in my head and make sure that's all right. So now I have x plus 4 and x squared minus 9. Um, this isn't quite done because this is that difference of squares. Uh, we didn't have them yet in this section, but now we do, and we can end up seeing things that do this um, in following sections. So this is going to go x plus 4, and then this is x plus 3, x minus 3, which is our a plus b, a minus b that we have coming up um, in a later section. So in 4.4, we have uh, factoring trinomials, and here we saw um, two versions of factoring. We have um, the first one is the nice kind where the leading coefficient is 1. We love that. Uh, look for GCF if there is one. Um, and then once we get it down to 1 um, x squared, just plain x squared, then that's where we can do the thing where we just set up the parentheses, toss in our x's, and then go, okay, so what multiplies to be um, you know the end and adds to be the middle? So here I have a GCF, so we're going to get that out of there. So I can take out a 3x, leaving me x squared minus 12x, and 3 goes into 81 27 times. Uh, once we got that, now we just bring down our GCF. Um, it's done. We're only working on what's in the parentheses. Um, also, if you're taking um, the class with me, it will never stop factoring here, at least on my test. Um, there is always going to be another step, so be careful once you get that GCF out 
that you look, you look further at the problem to see what what the rest of the problem is because I wouldn't do 10 points for, for just a GCF. Um, so it would do something kind of more like this. We can toss our x's in and then we just have to figure out what multiplies to 27 and adds to 12. So it sounds like a 9 and a 3. They both have to be negative. And that would get that one done. Over here I can pull out a 6 and that's going to leave me an x squared plus uh, 2x minus 15. And then once I have that, 6 comes down, x plus 5 and x minus 3, make the negative 15 and add to the positive 2. Okay, so then the second thing in this section is magic method. Um, and this is the one, this is probably the, the hardest method for students first learning factoring to get. Um, so our steps go uh, factor out the GCF if present. And so let me start with this first one. I'll just kind of go through the steps um, as I do the example. So from here, let's see, we got 14, 49, 27. So that sounds like a 7 in there. And then every term has at least an x, so I can pull an x out. And that will leave me 2x squared plus 7x and then minus 4. And so again, this just kind of comes along for the ride. And then the method for this, remember, was we set up the 2x and then an extra 2 with the x. Um, so we just duplicate whatever's in front. And then we go a times c. So a is this one, c is this one. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And we need two numbers that multiply to be negative 8 and add to be 7. So that sounds like 8 and negative 1. And then after that, we just put those in here. And um, we have that extra 2 floating around. So then I just divide it right back out. So, And the reason I'm doing here is because it goes in nicely to 2 and 8. It wouldn't divide in nicely here. So that's the spot to do it. And there'll always be a spot if everything's going right. You should always be able to divide out that extra whatever you put in, uh, whatever this number was. So then we end up at 7x, x minus 4, 2x minus 1. Uh, next one, so this is an example where it has that extra letter going on. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, we're still going to just kind of proceed. Um, 6 times 10, you know, we're still doing magic, so 60. I need two numbers that multiply to be 60 and add to be 11. Uh, negative 60, sorry, and add to be 11. So a 15 and a negative 4. Um, we set up our 6x and our other 6x. We toss in the 15 and the minus 4. And so out of 6 and 15, the biggest thing they would have in common is a 3. So that didn't quite get it done because they need to divide out 6. And then over here we see is the other 2. 6 and 4 both have a 2 in common. So 3 times 2, that's our 6. And 3 goes into 6 twice. 2x plus 5. 3 goes into 15 five times. 2 goes into 6, uh, 3x. And then 2 goes into 4 twice. Oops, and then I totally forgot about the y's. Sorry about that. Um, there were these y squared on the end. So the only difference is it just gets these y's on the ends. So let me get those put back in. There we go. Okay, 4.4 brought us uh, special products. And so we have, um, I think, three different things in this section. We have the last of the three-term problems. Um, so these are our perfect trinomials. Uh, we have a difference of squares, uh, which we saw for a second there in 4.3, or 4.2, excuse me. And um, then we have cubes coming up also. Uh, so this is the list of squares that I said you'll also have for the test, um, just if that kind of helps you identify what's going on with these. Um, so this first one, it's got two terms, and it's got a square, so it's either a GCF or this thing. And if I take a GCF out, then I can see I get x squared minus 9. And then factoring that a little further, x plus 3 and x minus 3. Um, so for the two terms, you get the op opposing signs, plus and minus. For three terms, we're going to get uh, same sign. So this is minus minus, and this one is plus plus. Um, here we have a GCF of 3x, so we'll get that out of the way, leaving me x squared and minus 4. So 3x, x plus 2, x minus 
two. Okay, so then we get the uh, three term problems. And I wrote out the formula here from the last page um, just so I could kind of match it up to the equation. Um, so these ones are either really easy or really hard. Uh, the key is noticing that there's squares on the ends of the three term problem. So for three terms, we have the kind that just led with a one, which is great. We have these kinds with squares on the ends. Those are also great. Oops, I forgot a square on this. And then we have um, where that doesn't work and then we have to do magic. So that's kind of our three possibilities for three terms. Um, so for this one, a squared is the 49x squared. So it's basically here we need a. So we're just saying what times what makes 49x squared. And that would be a 7x um, plus. And so this is a plus. So this is a plus. B squared is 4. So b has to be 2. And that's it. Uh, for number 24, right now it sort of looks like a magic problem, but that's because we have a GCF in there, so we got to get that out of the way so we can see what's up. Uh, 2 goes into 18, 9x squared. 2 goes into 60, 30 times. And 2 goes into 50, 25. Um, yeah, the one thing I didn't say back here, I'm just going to come back and do it on this problem. Uh, if we see squares on the ends in you know, 098, it's pretty much going to probably be squares on the ends. Uh, but we should at least kind of double check this middle term right here. And to do that, that's 2AB. And remember, we know A and B already. So it would just be 2 times 7x times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 7. And there's our 28x that we should have in the middle. Um, and basically what that is is just a quick little, it's just pulling out the cross terms to make sure that this is what we think it should be. Uh, so over here, this is going to go... Uh, 3x, because 3x times 3x gets 9x squared, minus makes this a minus, and 25 would break down to 5, and then just quantity squared. Uh, next one, there's a GCF of x squared, so we'll get that out of the way. And that'll give us a 9x squared minus 6x, and then taking an x squared out of x squared, gotta be careful to get that placeholder 1 right there. So x squared. 3x minus 1 quantity squared. And last one, so this thing would look awful as a, as a um, magic problem, but if you recognize it for what it is, 25 is a perfect square, 144 is a perfect square, it's just going to be 5x minus 12r in quantity squared. Um, so these formulas really do make this style problem much, much easier to deal with. And so then the last thing in that section is um, perfect cubes, so uh, solar difference of cubes. Um, and you do get the list of cubes also for the exam. These are the formulas for this. The only way to get these factored at this stage of math is to know the formula. Um, you just don't have enough math yet to get from here to here without someone saying it goes here. Um, or a whole lot of trial and error. Uh, so the way I look at these is, this is like my a cubed, and so my a is going to be um, 2x on this one. Um, 27 is my b cubed. When I see a 27, it breaks down to a 3, so my b is a 3. Um, so I just, I'm plugging those in here for the, oops, actually I'm plugging them in here because it's a minus, and so that's going to be 2x minus 3. Um, a thing about these formulas um, is the signs, the way they go. So the first sign is always the same as what you start with. The second sign is always opposite, what you just wrote, and the last sign is always positive. That holds for both formulas. Um, so that's kind of how I remember the signs. Um, once we get our 2x minus 3, then we go um, a squared. So 2x times 2x would be 4x squared. And right there we get that sign change for the opposite sign. Uh, a, B in the middle, so 2x times 3, 6x, and B squared on the end, so 3 times 3 makes 9. Um, the one thing with these that I see people do is they then try to improve this piece. Um, the formula stops here. Uh, I keep pointing to this one, sorry. The formula stops here uh, because this is as far as it can go. Um, this piece will never factor further. It looks like you should be able to do some kind of 2x plus 3 or something. Not the case. This would have to be a 12x for that to work. So if you just kind of believe the formula, it's right, and that will get you the cube factored. 
Uh, this next one looks like I got maybe a 2x going on that I can get out of the way. So if I pull 2x out, then I see the 27. And there's one of our cubes, x to the third plus 125z cubed. And so now I can see my cubes. So I'll write it down here because it's going to get long. Uh, 2x and then 27x cubed would make a 3x. 125z cubed would make a 5z. And then I just go back to filling in this pattern. So 3x times 3x, 9x squared. And then opposite sign, 3x times 5z would be 15xz. And 5z times 5z will be 25z squared. Okay, so in section 5.6, um, this is where we get uh, all the factoring techniques mixed together. So I'll run through one of each problem. Um, first, I want to kind of run through the flow chart for this. Uh, so our first step for every factoring problem is, is there a GCF? And if there is, it's critical you get that out of the way because it's going to obscure which of the methods it is you should be using. Um, so once you get the GCF out of the way, then you're going to count the terms, two terms, three terms, or four terms. Um, if it has four terms, it's going to be a grouping problem. We saw those in 4.3. If it has three terms, <clears throat> it can be one of three things. It can lead with a one, in which case that's the thing where we just set up the parentheses and do the x's. Um, and figure out what multiplies the end, adds to the middle. Um, it could have squares on the ends. That one's good, because then we get to look at it, write down the answer using the perfect square formulas. And then the third thing is if those don't work, then we're stuck doing magic method, which is sort of our five pound sledgehammer of um, factoring techniques. It works on everything, but it's not terribly easy. Um, and then the other thing that can happen is it has two terms in which case you're either going to have squares on the ends or cubes on the ends. And either way, it's you know your difference of squares formula, a plus b, a minus b, or the sum or difference of cube formulas, um, which are these right here. So let's look at one of each. So this first one is four terms, so that's going to be a grouping problem. Um, those don't generally have GCFs, but it's always good to check. I don't have one here. Um, so then I cover up the second two terms. And from these first two, I can take an a. So that's going to leave me a 3a the minus 1. And then I need to get another 3a minus 1, so I'm just going to write it down. And then that helps me see negative 5b is what I need to factor from these two. If I distribute back, I do indeed get the negative 15ab plus 5b. Uh, this is now my GCF. It comes out front. And what's left behind is the a and the minus 5b. Number 30, uh, this one we have a GCF of x. So I pull that out and I got x squared minus 14x and plus 48. So this is three terms. It leads with a 1. So this is the nice kind where we just set up the parentheses, toss the x's in, and then figure out what multiplies to be positive 48 and adds to be negative 14. So it sounds like negative 6 and negative 8. For number 31, that is, um, has three terms. It doesn't have a GCF. It doesn't have squares on the ends. It doesn't lead with a one. So that means we're down to magic. So three times negative 20 is our first step, negative 60. I need two values that multiply to be negative 60 and add to be negative 11. So that would be negative 15 and positive four. And then here's where we do our three X, toss in the 15, that extra three, plus four, and then we look to see where it's convenient to divide the three, and that would be right here. So uh, final would be x minus five, and three x plus four. Uh, this one, you can already kind of see the squares, but we do have an extra factor of x running around, so we'll pull that out front first. Four x squared plus 20 xy plus 25 y squared. And this has squares on the end, so it's going to be the kind where we just set the parentheses um, plus, because it's a plus, and then 4x squared breaks down to 2x, 25y squared breaks down to 5y, and then to check our middle, we go 2 times 5 is 10, and xy, and then double that, and there's our 20. Okay, so then we have our three-term problem, or our two-term problems. Um, this one definitely has a GCF going on, so I can take out an x squared and an a. 
and that's going to leave me an x squared minus 36. I'm taking 1a out of 3a's, so a squared. And then I can see I have a difference of squares. x squared a, and that's going to make x plus 6a, and x minus 6a. Uh, this one, just straight up cube problem, so 2x minus 3 is our a cubed minus b cubed. And then 2x times 2x, 4x squared, opposite sign here. 2 times 2 would make a 6x, and 3 times 3 will make a 9 on the end. Okay, and then we have the uh, last of the factoring. So um, this is where we pick up the equal sign, and we're solving instead of just factoring. Um, but the way that we're going to solve is to factor completely, set each of the factors to zero, and then solve those little resulting equations. Um, so here I can take out an x, and that's going to leave me x squared plus 9x plus 14 equals zero. Um, this is a uh, three terms leads with a one, so we're going to set up our parentheses, x and x. And then here I can say what multiplies to be 14 adds to be 9. So that sounds like plus 2 and plus 7. Uh, so there, <clears throat> when I have this, I had an x cubed, which means I can have up to three answers. And I have three x's here that I'm solving for. So this first one is just x equals 0. It's kind of the too easy, it's hard solution. Here, if I set it equal to 0, then I'm subtracting the 2 over. And that's why the factor and then the solution, or the zero, as it's often called, have opposite signs. And it makes sense if I put negative 2 in, I get negative 2 plus 2, and that would be zero. Um, and this last one would be x equals negative 7 by the same logic. Uh, this is definitely a too easy, it's hard. So x squared, remember we always have to get everything set to zero, so minus 42x. And then we'll take a common factor out is all we got, 6x and x minus 7. And so a lot of times people will try to turn this into a difference of squares or something, but it would just be this. Um, the 6x, so that's just like this x, if I set it to 0 and divide, is just showing x equals 0. And we're going to have that any time we have that x out front. And then this would be x equals positive 7 opposite sign of the factor. Okay, and then these last couple, um, they don't equal zero, so we're going to have to do some work to get there. So we'll go x times x, x times 3, and get x squared plus 3x, and then um, that equals 28. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 28 over, so I get my equals zero. And now that I have it set to zero, I can do my factor and solve. So this will go... Um, x and then x and have to be a plus 7 and a minus 4 to get to the 28 and the 3. So this one will be x equals negative 7 and this one will be x equals 4. And last one here, um, so we, this one we'll have to foil and all that just so we can get that 1 incorporated but that's what we got to do. So 2x times x will be 2x squared, 2x times 1, 5x and then 5 times 1. Um, so I'll get those middle terms collected. So I'll make a 7x in the middle, and I'm going to add the 1 over here all at the same time, so plus 6. So now that I have it to 0, I can see it's a magic one, so I'll go 2 times 6 and get 12, and then two numbers multiply to 12 and add to be 7 would be 3 and 4. So we'll do 2x, 2x, um, plus 3, plus 4. And right here it's easy to divide out the 2, so that's where we'll do it. 2x plus 3, and x plus 2 equals 0. Um, so this one's fairly easy to see that x equals negative 2. Um, this one, if you can see the negative 3 halves, just jump there. Um, but if not, what we're doing with that is we're setting it to 0, and then we're just physically solving for the x. So 2x makes negative 3, and I can divide that 2 over. And x equals negative 3 halves. And that wraps up the factoring portion.